This conference will now be recorded. Very good evening students. Today we will be discussing various questions from the 11th part which were being asked in J Main 2021 27th July paper and this is from the shift 1 paper shift 1 actually this is th so 27th July paper shift 1 and today what I have done I have just picked up specially the 11th standard questions questions from the portion of 11th okay so those questions only I am discussing today so let us start our discussions the first question says the figure shows two solid disk of radius capital R and small r respectively you can see this so this is the bigger radius okay like bigger disk these are all solid disk okay and this one is another solid disk having radius smaller and you can see very clearly that capital R is greater than smaller if mass per unit area is same for both mass per unit area is same for both generally we write mass per unit area as sigma mass per unit area m by a what is the ratio of mi of bigger disk around axis ab you look this axis ab which is perpendicular to the plane of the disk and passing through its center okay its center that means that means it is its own axis about its own axis we have to find out the moment of inertia of the bigger disk about its own axis that is very simple okay so we have to find out the ratio okay a ratio of the moment of inertia of the bigger disk about an axis which is passing through its center and the axis is perpendicular to the plane of the disk that, that is for the bigger disk and okay so you have to take the ratio of that to the mi mi means moment of inertia of the smaller disk around one of its diameter you can see that cd c is the cd is the diameter of the smaller disk lying on its own plane okay that means for smaller disk this is the axis this is the diameter axis along the diameter and the diameter is actually lying on the plane of the disk this is very clear from the figure okay now <clears throat> given capital m is the mass of the larger disk okay mass of the larger disk mi stand for moment of inertia that i have already told so capital m is the mass of the bigger disk and what information is given is that the sigma that is the mass per unit area for both the disk are same okay so we have to find out the ratio so let us first find out what is the like just recall the moment of inertia of the disk about its own axis suppose if i write this moment of inertia of the bigger disk that means let me give that uh, subscript to denote that the moment of inertia of the bigger disk of radius capital r so that is about its own axis so that will be actually m r square by 2 if i say the smaller disk has mass small m 
then moment of inertia about diameter okay diameter will be by r m r square by m r square by 4 okay half of the moment of inertia about its own axis right so these are two formula but we don't know the mass of this smaller disk okay we have to find out from here see i can find out the sigma into pi small r square writing this but what is this sigma sigma is actually the mass per unit area of the bigger disk you, you can write that so mass per unit area this into this then pi pi goes off now let us take the ratio let me write it here itself so this is i r divided by small okay i small r okay so we know this is m r square by 2 and if i take ratio there will be okay i'm just taking the ratio here m r square by 4 okay look here one more point i have to write here one more line so this m we have got small m we have got this is then m r small r to the power 4 divided by 4 r square this is the moment of inertia of the smaller one so now it is very easy to get this see i'll get four sorry yes four r square in the numerator and here i'll get m r to the power four so look it is clearly two r to the power four divided by this small r to the power four that means you know the ratio will be ratio will be 2 r to the power 4 is to small r to the power 4 so this is the ratio let us then cross check okay uh, yeah so let us match the answers so look this c option c will be the correct answer for this case okay all right so this was very easy question not at all tough but obviously you have to know the moment of inertia formula for the moment of inertia of the disk about its own axis and about its diameter that's all now this question this question says a light cylindrical vessel light cylindrical vessel is kept on a horizontal surface of surface area of base is given so area of base is this a okay this one area of base is given a hole of cross-sectional area small a is made just at its bottom you can see that this is the hole the minimum coefficient of friction necessary to prevent sliding the vessel due to the impact force of the emerging liquid what does that mean see this is very light cylinder as it it is mentioned here now when liquid will actually go out from the vessel there will be change in the momentum okay change in the momentum because this layer will be having almost zero velocity but when the liquid just come down up to this height let us say this height is h so it will obviously attain certain velocity okay certain velocity and that velocity we know what it is okay so v is equal to square root of 2 g h we know that so the velocity at this place the velocity will be this now velocity was here velocity was here zero okay so there is a change in the momentum obviously right so there is a change in the momentum and whenever there is a change in the momentum linear momentum there will be force okay so look here when the water 
just emerge out it will actually uh, there will be change in the momentum so by newton's law newton's third law of motion third law of motion as it, there is a force in this this side there will be force along this side just to uh, counteract each other okay but anyway this force see as you know according to newton's third law of motion action and reaction will act in the different body not in the same body okay action and reaction does not act on the same body it will be acting on the different bodies so since it is a light cylinder there may be a chance to slip this side okay slide in the backward direction that is what is the question now you have to find out the suppose the floor is not that smooth this is having certain friction or coefficient of friction so while it moving in the backward direction what will be the coefficient of friction such that it doesn't move or does not slide okay this is the question actually the minimum coefficient of friction necessary to prevent the sliding of the vessel due to impact see this impact means since there will be a change in the momentum there will be force in the opposite side okay force in the opposite side on the vessel by the liquid so you have to find out minimum coefficient of friction such that there will be no sliding of the cylinder okay look we know force is actually dp by dt right change in the linear momentum so at this particular position what will be the momentum i'll say ddt of mp here mp okay so as you uh, start like, like at as it as the water emerges out you know the flow rate there will be a flow rate right but the speed you look here the speed will be actually constant at this position because this is the horizontal position right after that there will be no according to according to energy conservation the speed will not change here okay so i can just take the speed out but what is changing is the rate of flow of mass and you know rate of flow of mass is equal to a into v a is the okay so you know that right rate of flow will be see i can just do it little elaborate here actually i can directly write a v a into v a is the area of this opening or the hole and v v is the speed of the speed of the water okay water flow okay so let us do one thing i'll just make this little bit elaborate so this am let us say rho into v rho is constant anyway so v v is the volume okay volume so this is rate of change of the volume so this can be written as so this can be written as actually v okay so i can get from here sorry this this we can write a v okay so flow rate this is the flow of volume actually okay flow of mass means rho a v square okay a rho a v rho a v will be a v is the actually flow of mass will be <clears throat> rho 1 a1 v1 is equal to rho 2 a2 v2 you have already learned i hope so this will be actually constant so if the density of the liquid constant a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 so that we have learned already right so here here i can write rho 
a is the area and b square this is the velocity all right so i i have got the force which is actually equal to the impact given by the water okay so what i can write from here i can write mu mg since i have to find out the force of like coefficient of friction so this is the force of friction which is actually should be which should be greater or equal to this force rho m square okay so for the uh, okay so maximum this i can write as equal sign okay so this will be rho a b square by mg so this height i know i have taken as capital h sorry small h so rho this is small area and this is v square that is fine v square i can write as 2gh because v is root 2gh so i can write that as 2g and h and in the denominator i can write see the capital area the mass of the water okay mass of the water what will be that a into h that is the volume into rho into g now rho rho this h and this h and this is this g so i get 2a by capital a okay so this will be the maximum coefficient of friction which will actually prevent the sliding motion of the vessel due to the impact of the water emerging out from the or liquid emerging out from the vessel so option b will be the correct answer for this question okay all right so we'll go to the next problem so this problem says the number of molecules in one liter of an ideal gas at 300 kelvin and two atmospheric pressure with mean kinetic energy 2 into 10 to the power minus 9 joule per molecules okay first of all let us write the mean kinetic energy we know mean kinetic energy let us write that as ek ek mean kinetic energy is Three by two kt. Three by two kt. Kt means kbt. Okay. So this kb can be written as r by n a. That you all know. Okay. Now see, this is an ideal gas. Let us write one thing here. Pv is equal to small n r t. Okay. Small n r t. right so this small n is actually a number of moles if i know that there are n number of molecules divided by avogadro number this will give you the number of moles i can just put it here so n n is the number of molecules okay per mole okay so here i think yeah so number of molecules you have to find out so this n i have to find out here capital n so divided by na into rt so from here look what i can write this pv is equal to n this is the number of molecules which we have to calculate this r by n i can write as k and t okay so from here i can actually find out what is kt okay kt is pv i'm sorry i can find out what is this uh sorry I have to find out an actually okay so i can find out what is n so n is equal to pv by kt but how do you get the kt so i can get kt from here look this expression so this ek is already given what is that 
that is 2 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule per molecules okay so joule per molecules all right so i can actually use this so kt will be from here kt will be 2 by 3 into this ek that is 2 into 10 to the power minus 9 so you get kt is equal to 4 by 3 into 10 to the power minus 9 so that i can use here right so now i'll put this values p is given as two atmospheric pressure so two into zero sorry two into 1.01 .01. let us take up to second decimal 1.01 .01 into 10 to the power 5 and v is one liter let us take that as 10 to the power minus 3 and divided by kt we have already got that 4 by 3 so i am writing 3 in the numerator and also okay so i have here 10 to the power minus 9 so this will go in the numerator look this this is 2 so 3 by 2 is 1.5 okay this is 1 as well so this will actually become see this will go in the numerator and here there will be 10 to the power 2 so 10 to the power 9 plus 2 that will give you 10 to the power 11 okay so the number of molecules for the given gas with average kinetic energy 2 into 10 to the power uh, minus 9 joule per mole sorry molecules will be sorry this is this will be positive 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 this is a number okay so look this option d will be the correct answer for this question okay now we have got another interesting problem this is from thermodynamics so previous one was actually from kinematic sorry kinetics current theory of gas now this is from thermodynamics okay so let us read the question first the question says in the reported figure there is a cyclic process a b c d a a to b b to c c to d and d to a okay on a sample of one mole diatomic gas one mole diatomic gas the temperature of the gas during a to b and c to d a to b and c to d are given okay this will be t2 t1 t2 and t1 is greater than t2 that means here the temperature is greater than the here okay sorry uh, here temperature will be the same so here up to here temperature will be t1 and here it is t2 it will be t2 here also here it will be t1 okay okay so you can see choose the correct option out of the following for work done if the process bc and da are adiabatic see bc bc this process and da this are actually adiabatic process that we can understand from the graph itself so these are having more stiffer slope so these are actually adiabatic process these two and also we know cyclic process uh cannot engine we have learned already so two will be isothermal two will be adiabatic processes so there is no problem in that okay now let me just give you the options okay let us see the options what are the options option says the first option w a b is equal to w d c a b d c then w a d sorry a d w a d is equal to w b c 
that means see these are two adaptive processes this this is bc this is so this is bc this is da or ad whatever you say so here these are actually adaptive processes so by these two options they want mean that question the question means that whether the work done in two isothermal processes are same or two adiabatic processes are same okay in the given i'm sorry oh so i have to write again option a w a b w d c option b w a d w bc option c says this w a b w c d and option d w b c plus w d a is greater than equal to zero that means positive greater than zero that means positive quantity all right so here we have to basically recall the expressions for the work done in the adaptive processes and isothermal processes so work done in isothermal process we know right so these are two isothermal processes so i'll write the general formula so that is work done iso is actually given by r t ln v2 by v1 now let us check with this a b and d c or c d whatever you say so let us calculate w a b so a b means in this process the whole process the temperature remains constant since it is isothermal the temperature is t1 now look this volume here and here i'm going from a to b so this will be v2 so ln v2 is 3.5 into v0 and v1 will be v0 alone so we get r t1 ln 3.5 okay or we can write 7 by 2 whatever it is now let us find out what is the work done during dc so dc if i take this as initial point this is final point then you look this temperature is actually t2 okay in this process c to d this is isothermal process here temperature actually becomes t2 and that remains t2 up to here then it changes here okay while it goes from d to a temperature actually increases because this is contraction okay this is expansion adiabatic expansion this is actually adiabatic con uh, adiabatic expansion and contraction okay compression you can say adiabatic compression okay so in case of compression the temperature rises because t1 is greater than t2 right so here for this i'll write rt2 ln see i have got different temperature first of all even if my ratio is becoming same still wab will not become equal to wdc okay if the quantity in the ln is becoming same also the work done will not become same but let us see whether this quantity inside the ln so this is v2 by v1 v1 let us say this one v2 is this one okay so 5.5 divided by 1.5 okay so this will be the thing then i can write rt2 ln c 11 by 3 okay so we can see clearly this is different this quantity is also different so this option will not be true now let us check with this one okay so let me clean this 
figured. Look, we need to remember the expressions for the work done in the adaptive process. So work done in the adaptive process. Let me go here. Adaptive process is actually given by minus n r divided by gamma minus one into T f final T final minus T initial. This is the formula. Now let us go with bc okay wbc so first term will be the same uh dr B, uh, so bc is this one so here the temperature is t1 initial and this is the final temperature t2 okay so t1 minus t2 all right and other things are all same actually okay so in number of moles will be the same R is the universal gas constant. This gamma is for diatomic gas. It will be the same. That doesn't change with temperature or something. And this will be, see, initial final temperature is T2 and initial temperature is T1, right? Now, let us go with this a, AD or DA. It is AD, okay? So AD, that means if it starts from A to D, a d let us see that n minus sorry minus n into r n is the number of mole and this is gamma minus one gamma is the ratio of the molar specific heat at constant pressure to constant volume and this also look here the initial is a point and final is d point for a d also if i go from a to d so final is t2 and this is t1 initial temperature and look this two these are exactly equal okay so these are equal this option is obviously correct correct okay so the option b is correct answer for this question and see obviously so these two are not going to be correct by the same reason this is see this is greater than greater than zero it is not true because there will be minus sign all right Okay. So option B will be the correct answer for this question. Now we'll go for few more questions, which I'll write in the board, in the white screen, and then we'll try to find out the answer for those. Okay. So let me write down the first question i think i have one, one more question okay that doesn't matter so the question is A stone, a stone, okay, better to write in red pen the question and then I'll write the answer in the black ink. Okay, so the question says a stone of mass 20 gram, a stone of mass 20 gram. is projected from projected from a rubber catapult of length 0 0.1 meter and area of cross section
10 to the power minus 6 meter square stressed by stressed by an amount zero point zero four meter. The question is the velocity of the projected stone of the projected stone. is dash meter per second so this is the question where you have been given young modulus y is equal to young modulus of the rubber is given as 0 0.5 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter square okay so this is the uh, young modulus given here okay so let us change the ink and start solving it So a stone, see, catapult are actually catapult. If you can imagine that, this is the catapult. Okay, rubber catapult. Actually, generally there will be rubber tied with a small sack kind of that here. So stone is actually projected with this. Okay. So while stretching it what will happen there will be elastic energy stored in this okay in the rubber catapult okay so while stretching it there will be energy stored elastic energy stored in this and as it is released that particular elastic potential energy or elastic energy will be converted into kinetic energy of the stone so this is the answer this is just conservation of energy okay or conversion of energy here i can say conversion of energy so here actually the answer the the main point is here that the elastic energy stored equal to kinetic energy of the stone okay so this is what we have to do so what is the elastic energy stored in this what is the expression for that i have to remember right so the total elastic energy will be half into stress given to the rubber catapult into strain occurred strain so this is energy density into the volume okay volume this will be actually total elastic energy okay so let us find out what is this elastic energy so what is stress we know stress is actually f by a okay and what is strain strain is delta l by l say now what is volume volume a into l right but here what is not given is the force we have been given area that is fine but what we have not been given is force how much force was applied so force see i can actually go for the definition of young modulus young modulus has got a definition y is equal to stress by strain okay that means a by a divided by delta l by l right this is strain and this is stress so i can find out what is this f by a f by a will be actually y into delta l by l okay delta l by l so we'll put it here so we'll get half into half into y into delta l by l this is from the strain stress then you have already got delta l by l and the volume a into l so one l from here 
and here I can strike out finally what I get the elastic energy will be half into y into area into change in the length delta l square divided by l I have this is this is all okay so this is what is the elastic energy now let us apply it here so half into y a delta l square by l this is is equal to half m v square half m v square right so look here i have to find out the speed or velocity of the projected stone here m was given 20 gram okay what else i i need y y is given here okay cross sectional area is also given here and this say the stretch is strain is given here catapult length also given here okay so point one is the length l capital l and delta l will be 0 0.04 so let us put the values here at least let us put the values okay let us skip this v square and take this half anyway cancels each other so y a delta l square divided by m into l let us write this value this is 0.5 i guess 0.5 into 10 to the power 9 0.5 into 10 to the power 9 delta l square 0 0.04 into sorry 0 0.4 this is in meter itself and this this is 20 gram that means 10 to the power minus 3 and l will be 0 0.1 meter okay we have to solve this okay so let us do one thing here so this is 0.5 into 10 to the power 9 here i'll get 4 by 100 so 16 by 10 to the power 4 here i'll get for this okay in the denominator i will get 20 so this one will go here so 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 itself 10 to the power minus 3 right so this if i write in the denominator so from here i'll get just 20 right so look then what i get 0.5 into 16 that will actually become 8 so 8 into 10 to the power 9 divided by 2 into 10 to the power 1 that means you know the 1 actually okay 10 just 10 so this is 4 into 10 to the power i think 4 into 10 to the power 8 okay so i i don't think i have given you the options let me just discuss the options given out here so what are the options given here okay i see so here this is actually the problem with dash okay so you have to fill up this dash okay meter per second let me check the answers i have done in the notebook it should be 20 meter per second okay let us see what we have got here whether we have got oh, oh i see i have actually forgotten to write a over here look a i have not multiplied i have just to multiply 10 to the power 6 here that's why i was getting too much okay so let me write 10 to the power minus 6 here okay 10 to the power minus 6 here all right so this is 10 to the power minus 6 area of cross section so that will give now a reasonable answer here so this will be 400 okay so v square is equal to 400 v will be 20 okay 20 meter per second so dear students here the options you uh, see in the in the blank space you have to actually 
right 20 meter per second okay so this is the answer for this question so we'll go go for the next question so next question is going to be really interesting so as i mentioned i am just picking up the questions which are actually uh belonging to the 11th standard okay all right so let us go for another question i'm just writing down the question here just don't get this interested okay so the question says a particle starts executing simple harmonic motion okay better write shm simple harmonic motion as you know in short shm executing shm okay of amplitude a amplitude a and total energy e now the question is at any instant at any instant its kinetic energy kinetic energy is 3e by 4 then its displacement y is given by the options given here option a y is equal to a by 2 option b y is equal to a by root 2 option c y is equal to a root of 3 by 2 and option d will be y is equal to a so the question is from shm a particle starts executing shm of amplitude a this is given the total energy is e that means kinetic energy plus potential energy so e is actually kinetic energy into Sorry, plus potential energy. Total energy is that. Now, the question says, at any instant, its energy, its kinetic energy is given this one. Okay, three by four. So at that particular instant, what will be the displacement of the particle so this total energy actually is exactly equal to half k a square a is the total displacement amplitude of the uh, oscillation right so this is the total energy okay this is the total energy now what is kinetic energy we have to remember the formula right so kinetic energy generally is okay so the expression for the kinetic energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is half into k into 
actually half m omega square so omega is equal to see half m omega square okay into okay so half m omega square so from there actually we can find out okay i'm not writing that in detail so that is a square minus a is the amplitude square and y square this is the displacement square actually you can find out see if i write x is equal to a sine omega t okay sine omega t so from here if you just take time derivative v will be a omega cos of omega t right so from here actually you can find out half m v square half m v square if you write so look here what i get half m v means this one a square omega square okay a square omega square into cos of omega t so cos square omega t that i can write as one minus x square by a square okay so from here actually a is the amplitude so from there you can actually get this see a square if i multiply i'll get a square here this is square i can cancel out so this omega square omega square i can write as k by m okay omega square is k by m for a simple harmonic oscillator so from there i'll get half k square okay half k into a square minus this expression okay so this is the expression i get from for kinetic energy all right guys i i hope you have understood this and you know this formula by heart okay now look the kinetic energy at this particular displacement it is given okay so what is that so that is given as 3 e by 4 that is equal to half k a square minus y square okay so this e again we know is half k square right is the total energy right so total energy half k into amplitude square so i can write half k a square minus half k okay uh, we'll just do this simplification from here half k a square minus y square half k half k i can strike from both sides so look then i get y square is equal to a square into 1 minus 3 by 4 so that will be actually a square by 4 right then what is y so y will be a by 2 so this is the displacement at this particular uh, instant when the kinetic energy of the oscillator is 3 by 4 times of the total energy okay so i'll stop it here with this next day we'll have i think for from the 11th standard i have one or two remaining i'll do that tomorrow and then rest of the time i'll continue with the 12th session or 12th the questions from the 12th part okay all right so thank you for your patience bye for today